So this is my second time doing this video because I used the wrong microphone the first time. Anyway, I am here introducing myself to you once again because I just did it a minute ago. Yes, you just saw my potato self and now you're seeing a different side of me. Talking for no reason. Anyway, so I am here to discuss your assignment. Your rhetorical analysis that is due at least three-fourths of the way on Monday. <laughs> Bet you haven't started. But anyway, so the point of the assignment is to do a rhetorical analysis over a failed presidential campaign. What does that mean for you? You are focusing on unsuccessful rhetoric, perhaps bad, um, that failed to sway his audience, and the person just got stamped a loser. Maybe they tried again and bailed again. Maybe they didn't. So this assignment is broken up into three different sections. Each should be about two pages. So the first section should be focusing on establishing the historical context of the time period. What does an audience member who doesn't pay attention to history or presidency need to know before diving into the rest of your paper? Do your preliminary research and present your findings here. Where are the, what is the most important thing? For somebody like me to know. For the second section, you will be examining three different advertisements from this failed campaign. Of course, it's the one you did the preliminary research over. Why wouldn't it be? Each of these ads should be from a different medium. Could be a presidential debate. Or a TV ad. Radio ad. An image. Something stupid on Facebook. Analyze each one and dissect it to get to the ethos, the logos, and the pathos in the wrong order out of it. <laughs> Purpose is to find a motif, something that ties all three of these ads together. You can focus on something like color theory if you're good at that. What does each color represent? Why are they used? What's the image in this logo we use meant to represent? Something like that. The third part I won't cover in too much detail, but it's a holistic analysis. What's going on as a whole? And with a comparison between motif and historical context, a juxtaposition between everything. Um, why did it fail this way in the audience? And as it says here, as this says here in my notes, you see it? They have their topics. Should be in the early stages of the writing process. I doubt it. <laughs> so to break this down even further, I'll go over the slides that I showed the other class over the rhetorical analysis. I will skip the parts that I've already discussed in this video, but I will at least bring it up in case you need to look at it for a second and you have access to this as well. Um, so one thing that I would decide to go along with is to do something humorous between Nixon and Kennedy. So with this, I decided to go with that Richard Nixon was strong for cheese. Fudge. John F. Kennedy was for cheese. Nixon was against public barters. So one thing you have to keep in mind is there is a certain timing, timeliness um, to messages. Certain things don't age well, like Rick, Richard Nixon's uh, campaign logos. Not the best choice of things to go with. Definitely couldn't do this now. Probably shouldn't even be doing this in the video, but you know, already did. So to continue this, Another thing I'd like to talk about is Kairos. Um, Kairos, as I explained here, uh, refers to the opportune time and place. It is the best or appropriate time to bring something up. And if it's the wrong time, then your social message will have little impact and could also hurt you. So to go along with this, I decided to do some practice because couldn't really get a good feel for somebody else's paper. So I went with this. At the end of 1959, presidential candidates Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy were in a race to force either mass amounts of cheese reduction or the harassment of public farters. 
While the two candidates were on equal footing, Nixon had not anticipated the growing popularity of cheese in the United States. The separation of indulgence versus discrimination between the two possible presidents caused backlash against Nixon's campaign. Further blowback from important figures during this time period also did not help Nixon. Looking at this presidential campaign, one could evaluate the missteps that Richard Nixon took during his campaign and how his voice policies prevented from attaining presidency, prevented him from attaining uh, presidency. Um, down here I have a little bit of attempts at doing it. Um, I did forget to do the his. This is all crap, of course, but it's an okay template to use. Um, so with your first section, when you're trying to establish the social climate, I decided to try to do something with that as well. So we have, in the 1950s, a popular pastime of U.S. citizens was a televised competition called Astro Burping. This process involved contestants trying to glide along slip and slide using only the gases in their behinds. As it was one of the only things on television at the time, many children and their parents would have family gatherings in fields to increase the global amount of methane. And later on in the essay, while Richard Nixon had the right idea to try and control the amount of gases being released into the atmosphere, his public statements only focused on how the game was a disgusting act that should have felonious uh, consequences because the, pe the only people who enjoy this game were the ones, oh, were the drenched underwear linings that have been filled with tame water. With the analysis of your uh, other ads, we have one of the slogans of Nixon was the image of a black and white buttocks, slightly dimpled, that is streaming out a cloud of green colored booty vomit. Below this is the message, no do, go rich, in small black text. As green is the only color in this image, emphasis is drawn to the spew cloud and it is associated with a foul odor, and so on. During a presidential debate, Nixon could be seen with the two palms of his hands resting on his crack sacks, butt cheeks, don't even try to use this type of verbiage in your papers, and so forth. So, uh, that's about all I have for this, so tell me how much I sucked, watch my outro, ask me questions if necessary, and thank you. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed my weird self, probably not, I'll be here to answer any questions that you may have. Yeah!